from Kazoo Hi, Mr. Sims. What are you doing here today? Kazoo to ukulele. Well, yeah, I got this ukulele. Oh, I've been thinking about goodness. learning how to play a new instrument. Blah. You didn't like my kazoo. No, you know, that wasn't that Doesn't great. Doesn't sound good? Listen, real careful. Well, the fact that there's only two strings on the ukulele is... Well, does uh, it need four? Yeah, you know, it probably needs four. That'd probably help you out oh. a lot. But, um, I thought this sounds good. This is... This is oh, man, this is a cheer. perfect noise. No? Yeah, yeah, noise. That's, that's sound. That's music. Important. All right, my little frowny face is crying. All right, we should probably do some chemistry, right? Yeah, probably should do some time. chemistry. All right, well, right, maybe I should keep that day again, job. Again, yeah, don't quit your day job. Keep doing chem. All right, so uh, last time we talked to you about naming compounds and writing formulas from those names. We also talked about writing and balancing chemical equations. Now, the reason we do all that fun stuff is basically so we can do stoichiometry. What'd you call that? I called it stoichiometry. Stoichiometry. Now, yeah, everybody say it together just like you did last year. Stoichiometry. Yeah, just like that. All right, now. Go. Um, we're also going to use dimensional analysis to solve it. That's the format we're going to have you do. That's the whole railroad tracks thing. You see, you guys did it all year last year. We just think it's a great way to solve a problem. All right, so Mr. Bergman, talk us through how we do stoichiometry problems. Well, you guys have the rules sitting in front of you, so I don't know that you need to spend too much time um, going over this, but you're going to start with the balanced equation, write underneath what you know, place a question mark, what you don't know, and then use dimensional analysis. You've I'm sorry, done what, this did, stuff what, what did you start with there again, Mr. Bergman? You always start with a balanced chemical equation. Are you telling equation. me I can't do stoichiometry without a balanced equation? No. You cannot. Okay, so make sure you always have your balanced equation before you get started. Don't try to do anything in chemistry without a balanced equation. So here we have an equation. And so, do we have a balanced equation? Mr. I don't Sam? see a balanced equation. I, I do not see one. one either. So I think I better start with a balanced chemical equation. So I have hydrogen gas. And of course, hydrogen gas formed is H plus. Wait, Mr. Bergman, it's like hydrogen gas is formed. Oh, it is formed. Okay. It's formed tells me that's going to be a product. Oh, so not I a did reactant. it wrong. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Put in the cart before the horse. So that would be an H. Okay. And it's formed. Uh, Mr. Like Bergman. What? Um, hydrogen gas is not just an H. It's oh. one of those magnificent seven or Brinkelhoff elements as we sometimes Oh, that's them. right. He's one of those H2 guys. It's a I knew chemical. that. I was testing you. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then we've got calcium. Symbol for calcium, of course, is Ca. And it reacts with sulfuric acid. If it's an ic acid, it came from a... 8 becomes ic, so sulfate, which is SO4. Now, when you do that hydrogen, that'd be hydrogen reacting with sulfate, ladies and gentlemen. And that's SO4, 2 minus, or negative 2, and H positive, so that'll be... H2, SO4. And now, we make hydrogen gas. Uh, wait a second. There's no calciums on no, this side. there's got to be something else. Now, you've got hydrogen gas coming off and you had a metal combining with an acid, that's probably going to be a single replacement reaction. Looks so like you're going to have to put the calcium. You see, the only thing left over is we've got some calcium. You see the hydrogen is here. That's from here. And we've got calcium and we've got sulfate. But I've got to figure out the charge of the calcium. Calcium is always going to be plus 2 yeah. because it is an alkaline earth metal, which always get plus 2 charges. When you put these ion. two together, the charge has to add up to... It uh, adds to add up to zero. Yeah, we last last time. Yeah, I remember that. So calcium sulfate is CaSO4. Because plus two and minus two equals zero. There it is. So we have a balanced equation now. Oh uh, wait, are you sure it's balanced? Oh, I didn't even look. Um, yes, yes. it's balanced. Actually, folks, ladies and gentlemen, this is a balanced one to one to one to one balanced equation. Now we have 13.5 grams of calcium. I'm going to rewrite this because I need a blank screen. So I've got calcium plus sulfuric acid, all one to one ratios, right, ladies and gentlemen? It makes H2 plus calcium sulfate. And we had 13, what is it, 13 and a half grams of calcium. Yep, 13.5 grams. So now I'm going to write down what I know underneath what I know. I want to convert to? Liters of hydrogen gas. Now, one thing, it doesn't give us any sort of conditions. It doesn't give us a pressure or a temperature or anything. So it's a pretty safe assumption that this is going to be at STP. Normally, it'll tell you that. It'll, it'll say at STP. Or we forgot it. it right. Or it'll give you some temperature and pressure. Since it's not there, just go ahead and assume STP for today. So now you just do dimensional analysis, ladies. 13.5 grams. Now, for, very important. Did I write 13.5? No. Uh, I wrote 13.5 grams. grams. And I must say calcium. I don't calcium. say of, I, but I write C gram CA. Yep. Put that over one. Now I do the whole railroad tracks things. I need to convert to what first now? We want to go grams to moles. The very first step, just about always, is going to be convert what you know into moles. And the way we go from grams to moles is we find the molar mass of something or the atomic mass. Of so you case. look up on the periodic table and you find that number is 40. 
You know, on AP, I've been thinking about this, guys. I think we're going to say 40.1 on this. I want you yep. to kick one decimal past. Uh, last year in regular chem, we did not do, we just ran the nearest whole. We're going to land the nearest tenth here yeah. in AP chem land. One general rule you can use as far as significant figures go uh, in AP chemistry is if you use three sig figs for everything, you're going to be okay. Because on the AP test, you can be within one significant figure and you still get credit for sig figs. And pretty much every answer on the AP test is going to have two sig figs, three sig figs, or four sig figs. So if you just have your answer have three all the time, three. you, you mm. hit it on the money every single time. Now, side note, ladies and gentlemen, we are my grams of calcium. I'll use change, change the color, but I could talk. Grams of calcium cancel. Now I want to get the, what do I want to get to go away, Mr. Sam? Uh, we want the calcium to go away and to become hydrogen gas. So and the way we do that. Of CA in the bottom calcium. because it wants to go away. And then I'm going to say moles. moles of hydrogen. I'm changing colors, ladies and gentlemen, because, of course, I have a new chemical here. Now, the mole ratio, this is from the balanced equation. This is one to one to one to one. This is a very easy mole to mole ratio. This is one to one. But now, my moles of calcium can change. You got that? And now, I'm going to convert to liters of STP. We're again assuming we're at STP. Then I can say on the bottom, the moles of hydrogen is equal to the liters of hydrogen. This is a the gas, so this is one mole is, what do we call this number is? That is 22.4 liters, because any gas will occupy 22.4 liters if you're at STP and there's one mole of the gas. The moles of hydrogen cancel, and now we get our calculator out. We get out. the calculator out. And again, you take 13.5, you would divide by 40.1, and then you would times it by 22.4, ignore the ones, of course, and that would give you the answer. And the survey says 7.5, actually the calculator, not the survey, yeah. says 7.54, and the unit that's left over is over here on the right, liters of hydrogen. Okay? Now, our second problem is similar. We have another chemical reaction. So, balanced equation, we have nitrogen gas reacts with oxygen. So, I've got to get it on the right side of the arrow. Yep. So, I'm going to do the arrow right here. So, nitrogen gas will be in. So, I've got the in, and I need to react with the oxygen. That's the O. And that makes nitrogen triiodide. That'd be in. A trioxide, O3, right? Okay, um, Mr. Bergman. Yes. Your, your N and your O there again. Oh. Uh, those are more of those Brinkelhoff elements. Oh, that's N, right. N, I need it. Two oh. here, N2 plus O2. But Mr. Sims, that doesn't balance now. Yeah, I know. But that means you'll have to balance oh, it. Oh, yeah. I guess I could balance yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, like you said last time, most complex cat compound is the O3. We kind of have a 3 and a 2 here. Yep. And so we need to put a 2 in front of NO3 and a 3 in front of the O2, and that kind of gives us the 6 and 6. Yep. And the nitrogen actually is actually balanced that way. Beautiful. So I'm, I'm going to write that on a separate screen. All right. Plus 3O2 makes 2NO3. All righty. There we now, go. Now, what do I know, Mr. Sam? We, it says how many molecules of oxygen are needed to make 5.5 liters of, uh-oh, can you go back to the previous slide real quick, Mr. I Bergman? think we have a typo. We have a typo. A discrepancy in our... Oh, nope, not a typo. Mr. Bergman just wrote it wrong. It is dinitrogen, dinitrogen trioxide. Mr. Bergman is totally making mistakes here. I did right. that on purpose to test uh -huh. you, Mr. Sams, uh -huh. and you didn't catch me. Uh -huh. So we got to rebalance this equation. Yes, dinitrogen. We do trioxide. All right. So this is going to require a... I'm still going to say we go with the two and the three. And the three. That's Actually, just going to change this guy over this there in the front. There All right. There okay. Go. Let's try this again. We need, we want to know how many molecules of oxygen are required to make so five... molecules under the O2, question mark. How many molecules of those do we given need to make 5.5 liters of N2O3, of N2O3 at STP? Now this time we remembered to, to write at STB. So I'm going to convert 5.5 liters of dinitrogen trioxide, and I'm going to then convert to liters of nitrogen trioxide. you got to write... Now, guys, if you forget to write the N2O3, um, that is called a naked number. Yes, we don't like naked numbers. We like them fully clothed. Put your clothes on! It is ugly. If you have ugly clothes, must have clothes on, always. Okay, where are your clothes? All right, what number goes on the bottom? 22.4 liters per mole gas. y cuatro, I think is how you say it in Spanish. I may be wrong. All right, so liters of dinitrogen trioxide goes away. And now I must convert to 
mole to mole ratio. Mole right? to mole ratio, yes. So I can say moles of N2O3. Now the number in front of N2O3 here is a two. dos, a two. And in front of moles of oxygen. O2. Oxygen. And this of course is a three. three. Notice I'm changing colors. That's on purpose because now I've moved to my secondary chemical and now I want to go to molecules. Yes, so moles to molecules. Okay, don't forget. One mole O2. Molecules two. are individual particles, therefore we need to use Avogadro's number. 6.02 6 times 10 to the 23rd. So in my calculator I'm going to type. You're going to type. 5.5 divided by 22.4 times 3 divided by 2 times 6.02. Now don't forget folks, you're going to push the E button, 23. It's actually the EE -E button, but it's going to appear E on the calculator, and you probably get quite a number. Now this calculator is giving me a very strange readout, but it's going to be 2.22 times 10 to the 23rd power. And that would be molecules, no nakedness here, of oxygen. I need to change. The letter's being funny. All right, then it looks like we have an additional problem. We've got calcium carbonate. It's going to decompose. Now, what does decompose mean? Decompose Mr. breaks down into the stuff it's made up of. Right, just so like calcium and carbonate, you have to kind of like do the charges. Calcium's charge from earlier is a two, two positive, and carbonate is a two minus. Two minus. So that's CaCO3, and it decomposes into. Calcium oxide. Calcium oxide. Now I know the charge of calcium is two positive. Oxide is two negative. When we put those together, that's simply CaO. The positive two negative adds up to zero, plus a common gas. A common gas. Well, I see some carbonate there, which is CO3. I know that there's a pretty common gas that looks like CO2. And that would be the answer. Carbon dioxide. And folks, I'm not going to spend too much time, but this is already balanced. Okay? So you get that idea. So we've got the calcium carbonate. I'll get a blank screen. Goes to calcium oxide plus o CO2 gas. All right, and we got 45.5 grams of calcium oxide. 45 point what, Mr. Sanders? 45.5 grams uh, of calcium oxide is formed from how many liters of gas? I'm sorry, if that many grams is, er, is formed, how many liters of gas is also formed? So we want to know liters of CO2, how many Assume that's that. STP. I'm going to assume that's STP. So, since folks, that I, this is probably, you may not need to do this example because we're, oops. I'm going to try and go fast. 45.5 grams of CaO, and I'll yes. say grams of CaO. So that's going to 40, be 56.1 56 56 yeah. if we really want to get. And then that will be one mole of CaO. And the one to one ratio, one mole of CaO is equal to one mole of CO2. And then I'll say 22.4 liters of CO2 to one mole of CO2. When yep. you get the math, it comes out to be... It is 18.2 18.2 liters. liters of CO2. So probably we overdid that one. Who oh else? Sorry. Oh well. Okay. Now we want to move to limiting reactant problems. So um, you may want to just reread these rules, but basically convert all the reactants. Actually, this is a different method than we taught. That's right. Last it's year... It's an advanced method, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Last year we taught you to convert everything, uh, both reactants, to something in the end. A and particular the, product. And, yes. little, and the smallest one won. And you can still do that if you want, but we're going to show you a way that kind of saves you a few steps here. So you're smart enough now to know that you can save some steps, and we'd like to show you that. So then you're going to divide um, each number of moles by the coefficient in the balanced equation. We're assuming we have a balanced equation. And then um, the chemical with the lowest number of moles is the limiting reactant. And then you'll use the limiting reactant for all further calculations. So we'll do some examples. That's always the best way to do this. Okay, it's coming right. up here. All right. All right, you have this here. I'm going to have to, of course, go to blank screen. There's not enough space. Yep. So we have the paper in front of us as well. All right, so first thing we need to do is write a balanced equation. That's part A. We have uh, iron. Symbol for iron with is? Fe. Fe. It's reacting with chlorine gas. Ahem. What? Ahem. And it makes what? Brinkle. Oh, coal. Coal off. Okay, I had that too there. Okay, Thank you. good. And it's forming iron three chloride. That's iron with a Roman numeral three after it, which means it has a plus three. No, Mr. Bergman, it does not mean there are three irons. Oh, that's right. It's the charge it's the of so the iron. So, ladies and gentlemen, of course, that's FeCl3. Fe is positive three chloride minus one. And we need to balance that equation. 
Now I see a two and a three on the chlorine, so let's just go three and two, make them both six. Throw a two in front of the iron, and we're good to go. All right, now what do we know here? All right, now next question says, what is the limiting reactant? So to do that, we can start with what we know. We have 114.0 grams of iron, and we have 252.7 grams.